Hey, welcome back to Death's Night Real Podcast. This episode is NFL predictions continuing, following first things first. Still still like the show, even though Nick Wright hates the Jets and hates Rodgers and Wiley's a Patriots fan, but you know. Yeah, it does make it a little a little tricky at times. But they, they, they stay to like who they are, so I yeah. love I love the chemistry. That the herd and that yeah, those stays are down for two six, of the best like shows. Five and a half hours during the afternoon that while I'm working. So yeah, good th- stuff. those are definitely two of the best sports shows and Although I, I didn't agree with most of their predictions, but... I don't agree on almost any of them, but... Well, a lot of them, maybe. Oh, a lot of Pittsburgh love just surprised me. It's because you hate Kenny Pickett. Same thing last year with Mac Jones. I was like, what? why do people think they're going to win anything? Now, like, oh, they had a worse season last year with the worst play ever, and it's still almost... Yes, because they beat the Jets twice. You take away those two wins, and they're terrible. <sighs> Anyways. So, this week we're going to do MVP... Offensive player of the year, defensive player of the year, rookie of the year, head coach of the year, if we can even name players. Um, <laughs> and then we'll do a dark horse MVP as, as well. Right. Someone that sh- no one else, no one else is talking about. So it can't be, well, I think Lamar Jackson's a dark horse MVP. <laughs> you can't, you no, can't no, it's, use that. It's got to be who's going to come out of nowhere. Right. Um, now I will say, let's, to me, the e- the easy choice in my head is defensive player of the year with Parsons from Dallas. Well, I would go Micah Parsons or T.J. Watt. To me, it loves both of them. I think I get exposure. T.J. Watt, when he played last year, they won. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I get the feeling with, with NFL players, when they start suffering those major injuries, they don't tend to suffer less. So I think he'll miss a couple. I don't think he's going to miss tons of games, but I think he'll miss a couple games every year. Um, I think that's going to stop him, but I, I think Parsons is just a monster. No, I'm not. Parsons is a Although player. his second half Parsons last year was not the same as the first half Parsons last year. So. Well, I think the same thing with the Jets defense. I think they got tired because Dak's just not throwing. And I'll give Dak some credit. I didn't realize he had a broken thumb at one point. That yeah. that changes a lot for a quarterback, uh, guys. He's an underrated quarterback, and I hate Dallas. Well, I mean, um, he had a lot of bad interceptions. Like, he had about 17, 18. He threw a pass, would be dropped by the defender, and then he threw the exact same pass the next place. Yeah. It's like, oh, you want one? <laughs> Here, you know, I'll give you a second chance. So, yeah, T.J. Watt, Michael Parsons is who I'm to. It's yeah, definitely but, not Jamal Adams. It's got to be. Yeah. It, thanks, thanks to Jamal for building our Jets team. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you'd like to say someone like Sauce and stuff like that, but it's, it's almost impossible for a defensive corner Unless they start getting like eight, nine picks and get some touchdowns, it, it's almost always going to be a be, rusher. You got to be Dion. Yeah. You got to be prime time. Which, by the way, shout out to Colorado in prime time for basically kicking every single person off the team and coming back and beating TCU in a barn burner last night. Yeah. So I, I will say Quinn Williams is going to have an outside shot because we have such good pass rushers on the edge. He's not going to see as many double teams. So I, I think. Giving him an outside shot, but that that's I still, jet bias. I'm trying to stay away from jet bias. No, I know, I, I am too. But <clears throat> Parsons has a great chance because defenders there are going to make a difference in the AFC. There's so many good offenses, so many good oh, quarterbacks yeah. like Mac Jones, C.J. Stroud, and Garoppolo. If he's healthy, are like the three worst quarterbacks in the AFC. Yeah, it's absolutely. Stacked. Or Anthony Richardson, but he's going to run. He's going to run forever. Uh, Again, I'm a Florida Gator fan. That is the most inconsistent boy. Yeah, he's he's an athletic well, freak until he gets scared and stops running. One one year, but yeah, but I mean, Florida just lost to Utah. So I, I know that one hurts. First play of the game, ADR touchdown or whatever. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Florida's in that Miami territory right now. So hey, Miami won yesterday easily. Oh yay! Well, how'd they do the last few seasons? They, but City they, in yeah. a worse conference. They had like the third incoming class. Of the top 300. And they got a good coach. They got to help the re, that okay, resaved so, Oregon. So maybe maybe Florida's where Miami's been the last eight years. Yeah, no, Miami sucked. There's, there's <laughs> well, no doubt about Florida's it. Florida's having a bad year. But they're not going to suck this year. Yeah, they will. No, they won't. First of all, I don't know who's even in the ACC anymore. I don't know. Uh, these conferences are getting weird. Like, we're going to invite Stanford to the Atlantic Coast Conference. And they're, they're accepting it. And SMU, like, I'll, I guess, well, we've kind of got off topic, but. So college football, yeah, like, but look at how many how many good games were there yesterday. The one in twelve Colorado versus TCU was a good game because of Dion and his son threw for like eight million yards yeah, he threw for five hundred and thirty <laughs> yards or something. So they got the guy playing both ways. Who's going to be a Heisman candidate if he stays healthy? Um, but how many good games were there yesterday? So well, the merging of conf- 
Right, but when you st- when you start having a conference schedule of you have thirty teams, stop stop playing Alabama with Middle, Middle Tennessee State. Can we stop doing that? <laughs> can we have real games? All- I'm not saying Alabama has to play Georgia week one, but can some teams? Play other good teams well, week one. The reason that happens... Not one good game on TV, that's other there, There's you. a reason that happens. Obviously, it happens from the good team's perspective because they want to get a tune-up game. Right, like right? Auburn played UMass. But it also happens from like the UMass perspective because they get, oh, they get, they get money. money that they need to keep the colleges, to keep their athletics going because they're just not as good. Right, but I'm just saying, like, there should be... You shouldn't be playing, like, Michigan when they lost to Appalachian State. That game never should have been allowed to be scheduled. Right. Or Marshall, whatever. I'm just saying, like, there should be good games week one of college. Of uh, this is exciting. It doesn't have to be. You have to be able to think. Can this well, team stay within there, thirty? Usually, there's a couple of good games even in the first week. But again, it there was nothing. It, it is hard because it's a balance, so especially this, <clears throat> with some of these power conferences. Right, and what they should do basically is going to be three conferences soon. It's going to be right. the Big Ten, SEC, I guess ACC because they're right in California. I was going to play Hawaii. Um, in and just have just have another body make the schedule. Think like the baseball team, like guys, I want to go down there. Well, no, I mean, think about like lacrosse, like all the yeah. other stuff, like basketball. They're like they go cross country and then back. What? So anyway, so we got defensive player of the year, um, college. I guess that would have been a good good subject. So I, I started with defensive, so you can kind of pick the next award. Uh, um, offensive player of the year. I I should have had. A, a solution to this when I went here. <laughs> I want to say it's Garrett Wilson. I really, really do because I think he had 1,200 yards with Zach White, Mike, Zach Wilson. You know, Zach White would be an awesome quarterback, right? <laughs> like Zach Wilson, Mike White together. You take Mike White's fearlessness and, <laughs> and his Zach Wilson's talent. Right. Great quarterback. Um, that's not how it works. So I. I I don't know, maybe a Kansas City wide receiver because I don't know when any of them are. Tony's always hurt. No, they, they, they spread the ball. I mean, Kelsey is the wide receiver for Kansas he's not, City. Yeah, but he's not going to offense player of the year. Um, no, he, he won't. Um, I mean, I personally feel it's going to be Justin Jefferson. Uh, Jefferson's a, a good choice. I mean, there's a couple running backs that are out there that have an opportunity, but um, I think Henry is probably going to start taking a step back a little bit. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be a running back at all. It's going to be a running back by committees. It's yeah, going to be a wide receiver. There's not enough help, but they get the touchdowns, and, that, and that's why. But I think Justin Jefferson, he's still, in my opinion, the best receiver in football. Um, right, and Devontae Adams has – I mean, the Raiders are going to score a lot, but he doesn't have the quarterback throwing yeah. the ball. And, and I don't think he – I don't think he enjoys it there as much. I don't I don't think so either. I mean, Mike Evans is going to be in some stuff. Cooper Cup's banged up. So a lot of the guys that you would go with – I mean, outside taking quarterbacks out of it. Well, so quarterbacks lose, you get the MVP, and then another right. player. So be, when you were saying offensive player, I was taking quarterback out of it because I think that's right. Because quarterbacks going to win MVP. It's yeah. almost it's almost guaranteed now. MVP is the best quarterback. Offensive player of the year is the best skill position. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Saquon Barkley does have an opportunity. No, because uh, I think I think the minute he has, once Daniel Jones goes back to being Daniel Jones, and then he has like minor injuries, like a week seventeen or yeah, I just week think 15. he has a lot to prove. I think he's going to try, but again, it could go either way. I think he's going to play. He hurt. could try to if they're losing. That's why I said it could go either yeah, way. If the Giants are winning, he'll play banged up. I think that's the way his mentality is. But I think when they're losing, like after use the Sam Howell and the Redskins, because Daniel Jones fumbles it five times again because last year he fumbles just didn't go away right. from him. I think he's going to be like, yeah, dude, my hand. I'm going to tear my hamstring. I'm not going to get a new contract. I'm already considered injury prone. Let me let me take a week off. And if we're, if we're talking MVP, I'm going to say Aaron Rodgers. Uh, but since oh. we ha- we have to each pick someone who's not on the Jets to make it fair, because again, Jet bias, knowingly. Um, well, I think just half the media hates him so much right now that they wouldn't vote for him for it. If they make the playoffs with a really good record, it's going to be hard not to. Aaron Rodgers is a presidential candidate right now. Yeah. But the people, it's 50 50. Half the media loves him, half the media hates him. It's yep. crazy. No matter what he does or says, they're yeah, like... No matter what. No, he, he didn't throw for 300 yards. I never thought I'd hear that about Aaron Rodgers. Well, it's been too long since he 20, threw for 23 300 games. yards. Thanks, Wiles. 23 games. Oh, okay. One, he was hurt half the last season. And two, I just don't think he cared that much the last two seasons. Well, two years ago, he won the MVP. <laughs> so, whatever. Um, and his and arm then, didn't get weaker. Right, last year they are talking about over 40 yards. 
Well, I know of two specific drops that happened because they were there and the guy just dropped it. Yeah. That's on him? All right, whatever. Um, MVP, so you're going, you're sticking with Aaron? Well, that, that's my jet pick, but I'll, I'll give you a non-jet pick. I mean, pick. I think it's Mahomes. I don't think so. I actually think... Because he, he, no one's going to know his receivers. No one's going to know his running backs. And at, without Chris Jones playing for at least eight weeks, whatever it is, they're the, going to have to score. For the same reason, I don't think Kelsey's going to be up there for offensive player of the year. I, I think he's bound to get one of those flare-up injuries. He just does too much for the team. Um, yeah, but, I mean, he... So I think the offense takes actually a little bit of a step backwards. He had a year. perfect half in a Super Bowl and ran for, like, 40 million yards of one play. But they also and, like, had, a broken whatever it was that he was hurt. No, I, I get it. <laughs> Um, I mean, as the Super Bowl drama was going, he just like, doo, 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 doo. like he, he can barely stand at his ankle. He can barely move around the pocket, and he just takes off and has a perfect half. Yes, I mean, so there's – and my honest feeling is that um, Aaron Rodgers is going to be the best option. Um, so I have trouble kind of picking the second, but if I had to pick kind of the second option, probably going to lead more someone in the NFC. Um, so – Kind of a little dark horse so, version, I mean, maybe a Kirk No, Cousins. we're not doing not, dark horse yet. No, this isn't like the dark horse. I'm just saying, like, Minnesota uh, has great receiver, so I, I think... Uh, yeah, I think, I, think the, I think the story is written on Kirk Cousins. I don't think he's going to get... I mean, Jalen Hurts, if he has another year like last year, I think they'll give it to him by default. So... Yeah, I, mean, I just think it's going to be one of those NFC um, teams. Hey, you know what? I'm going to say Dak Prescott. That, that is going to be... Who I say wins MVP this year? Everyone loves the Cowboys. I don't. All right. No, I'm talking about. No, I'm not talking about. I'm talking about rooting for them. I'm talking about like loving the Cowboys winning a lot of games. I'm just. They don't have. Do they even have a healthy running back? No, I think it's more of a. Oh yeah, they got the guy who backed up Zeke last year. Yeah, but he broke his leg in the playoffs last year. I get it. Is he fine? Um, but I look at. I still don't think. I think Washington's overrated. I think the Giants are overrated. And, yeah, Philly's there, but... How's Washington overrated? Everyone's picking them to finish last. And people say they're good because they had a good record last year. I guess it depends who you watch. The, yeah, but the Giants... But still... Fine. Fine. I don't think... I think... Wait, Dallas Washington, finished last last year. Yeah, I, That's I, right. I, Dak, Dak had a bad year. Yeah, I, I think Washington and Giants are four wins right there. <laughs> what, from Dallas? Yeah. They didn't do that last year? I, I just think they're better the Same last team? Year. Well, they lost their offensive coordinator. Broken there. thumb. Right, no, and that, that helps, but it's Mike McCarthy calling plays again. Yeah, that's true. Not Kellen Moore. I'm not going to stick I said, I still think it's Aaron Rodgers, but I'm going to pick Jack and, and my... Uh, and sorry, Steve. One of the reasons everyone loves the Cowboys, and I know he's not good, and I don't know why everyone loves him. But Lamb? No, no, not CeeDee Lamb. I was like, the guy that got drafted to my team last year because I didn't want to pay any attention. I was on two different screens. I didn't know if I'd pick. And the computer gave it to me in the second round. And everyone loves him, and he's always... Great, but he never does good. He's been my fantasy. I am, I am. I'm just saying. I know this because he's been my fantasy team. I know it's not all, but fantasy is stats. Brandon Cooks. Why? Why does everyone think he's great? Why? Why you gotta knock the guy who's on my fantasy team like nine years in a row and got hurt every year? <laughs> I'm just saying, like he doesn't do. it. I don't know where he gets his thousand yards. I swear, it's like one game he gets a thousand yards. It doesn't well, do anything. It's almost exactly what he does. Is he gets these three good games? Yeah, he, he has a. He'll stack a few good games together and then he disappears. Then he stacks a few together. He's a deep threat. He, he's someone who lives on blown coverages. Not anymore. It's, he can't be the reason why your offense is better. So they lost their tight end. Their offensive line is not as good as it was. No one knows who the backup running back is. And their, their Pollard's coming off the injury. So they lost the OC, the tight end. Ever since they traded Mario Cooper, they've had problems after C.D. Lamb. Because Joey Gallup was hurt. And well, that's what they're saying Cooks is going to provide. But he doesn't provide anything. He does. You just said he. I don't know how he gets thousand. Those three, four, five. He got like seven hundred dollars right. last year. He did nothing last year. I refused to cut him last year, so no one else could get him. I just put him on my bench. I said, "Well, wait, because guys do good on my bench." Yeah, one, of, one of the moves I heard a few people talking um, lately about the Raiders are going to be the star horse team and stuff like that. One, they have the worst coach. Ever. Um, no matter where he goes, he just destroys him. Yeah, he doesn't have Brady. And why is no one talking about Waller, the tight end? I mean, that as much as I don't think the Giants are good, I think that was a great pickup. Oh, yeah, I know. That was a great pickup. Waller. 
I don't understand why people act like that's not going to hurt Devontae Adams and not going to hurt that offense. Well, because well, Devontae Adams is still going to get his. He's just so good. If the quarterback throws him the ball. I know, but that was one of the best tight ends in football two years ago. Yeah. All right. So, did I so, give it off MVP? Yeah, no, yeah, I said yeah. Mahomes. So, now going to rookie of the year. Rookie of the year. Um, this is why I wish I had all the rookies listed in front of me. Uh, but defensive rookie year, I'm going to say the defensive oh, player right from Georgia that went to Philly. Um, I think he's surrounded by so many I don't think so. Well, I think that's exactly why. He's surrounded by so much. He's going to come in, he's gonna do snap, what he needs yeah, to do. No. Um, so I, I think that's the defensive rookie year. If I'm going for offensive rookie year, that, that gets much more challenging. Um, I don't think it's going to be Richardson. Uh, I'm trying to think of the other um, quarterback. I'm just trying to blank his name. Carolina, Bryce Young. Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, Richardson. I think Bryce Young. I, I think he gets Offensive Rookie of the Year. No, quarterback, I don't, I don't think so. All right, to me, Offensive Rookie of the Year is pretty clear. It is Bijan, or whatever his name is, the Atlanta running back. Oh. <laughs> because Atlanta. John Robinson. Or yeah, whatever. Atlanta has three first-round picks on their offensive line. And they ran the ball good last year with, I don't want to say nobody. I don't, want to, I don't know who he is. With, like, a regular dude. Like, had a great year rushing. And now you're bringing a stud behind that. So I think he's going to get like 13, 1400 yards as a rookie if he doesn't get hurt. Those rookie ones are so hard to tell, though. Because and then, you never know what a rookie's going to do. You just haven't seen it. And full disclosure, I used to watch a lot more college football than I have the last year or two. Um, I still watch as much as I can. but yeah, I still watch it, but it's hard to find the good games on. Um, especially when your team sucks. But <laughs> Will Anderson. Uh, I, I hate picking Alabama guys because they never they don't make that big jump from from Alabama to the NFL. Like, well, it's because they stand out so much. At Alabama. That's what I'm saying. So, ten of them. On, that's on what I'm saying. That they have they have the coaching that gets the most out of them. They're surrounded by a lot of talent. So I think it takes them a couple of years to realize, oh shit, the guy to the left of me, the right of me, isn't the best in the game as well. But I'm gonna say Will Anderson because he's gonna. I think the Texans are gonna be down by a lot, and he's just gonna have a lot to try to just rush a quarterback and. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I said I'd say the Georgia player, but Will Anderson wouldn't shock me either. Um, I think Jalen Carr is going to do snaps to to the rest of the. The, the only other thing is if some rookie out there gets five, six interceptions, he could sneak up in there. Um, but I have to pay to your cornerback. No, no, stop it with that. Like I hope not. I, I mean, he does have a natural advantage. They know every play that's coming. Yeah, but he was good. In, uh, and and, uh, and the proof for that is all right. I'm going to go down this low road a little bit. Going down? Go so down. Zappy read defenses perfectly when he was in there, and they cut him. Uh, now, they picked him back up, so I know they were just doing their cutting thing. But the whole league one. knew he wasn't even worth having on the roster. But somehow when he gets out there, he knows everywhere the defense is going to be. He knows like audible perfect. J- Jerry Jones traded a fourth-round pick for Trey Lance. No one picked up Zappy for free. Yeah. No one. Like, all these teams, like, even the Raiders. No one <laughs> picked yeah. up Zappy for but free. He goes in there, and all of a sudden, he's an 80% passer. Why? Because he knows the defense. And the coach will go back to And the coach staff won't leave him in. Like, the Patriots, with that idiotic special teams defensive coordinator, like, I don't know, still don't know how that's not suggested that they'd never live it down. Yeah. How that's not great, like, but attack. Now they got Bill O'Brien. And there's, that's the reason why Mac Jones struggled. Was happy when he came in with the same coaches. I know this next to a while is the first things first. Had good games, and that's what Nick Ravens always tell him. Well, strange because the defensive coordinator didn't have a problem with Zappy in the game. Yeah, it, it's it's funny because Mac Jones he still knows where to go with the ball. He just doesn't have the arm to throw it far enough. And they signed the uh, the guy that was released by Carolina. Did they? Yeah. Yeah, I said there. So the guy, the guy who was a great backup last year, even if you don't want to start him, the guy that was a great backup. You cut, you put to your practice, and you go sign some dude out of Carolina that did not have a good year. Like a yeah. former third-round pick. But it makes a difference. Again, I, I go back to that Doug Flutie helmet thing that no one paid attention to because everything was yeah, focused on Spygate. It's like, oh, well, go, go watch the quote from Doug Flutie when he picked up the wrong helmet and goes, I was really surprised it, was, it didn't cut off like it's supposed to. The only coach to ever say anything, because he's the only one that can get away with it, and even he took some slack about it, was Mike Tomlin. It's like, oh, our headsets mysteriously stopped working again. <laughs> like, something has always happened in New England. That is the only <laughs> chance I give the Raiders this year 
is I think that coach starts stealing some things. I don't think it's going to matter. Well, Jimmy you, G's going to get hurt. If you know what's coming, it matters. No, I mean, like, it matters. That's why you like to play with Seth Creed. It like, doesn't matter if you're playing like Patrick Mahomes. He's out there just ad-libbing. Um, oh, right. Yeah, that's why Belichick can't stop running quarterbacks. That's why he can't stop Josh Allen, Lamar Jack. He struggles against quarterbacks. I go off script. Why is that? Because he knows the script. Right. No, that's like when we used to play Madden. You had to think. Even if you just knew the three plays. <laughs> you could build defense. Remember, we used to have to change, like, audibles, and we changed all the playbooks. So it would be, like, a run pass, and you didn't know. Right. Because it used to be, oh, these are three running plays, three pass plays. Oh, if I know it's a running play, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And you destroy it. You get so mad at each other at the time. Like, stop looking at the screen. Stop looking at the screen. I'm like, not. I can't. I'm trying to pick my play. Like, I'm not. And also, you see 12 people at the line of scrimmage. Like, you just have to like, pick it real quick, and then you have all the audibles. You have, like, six audibles. And you go in. So, anyways, I guess. Patriots finish the last, guys. Stop. Stop with this. Unless Aaron Rodgers gets kidnapped by aliens, which I already said is a possibility, Patriots finish last in the division. Because even if Tua gets hurt, Mike White's still better than Mac Jones. Mike White ain't going to play. He's still better than Mac Jones. <laughs> For someone who likes injuries, you ignore his. Oh, they have an injury history. Except for Mike White. <laughs> he has a one-game success history. This cause, no, Mike White, because he stays in the pocket forever. The dude needs some fear. <laughs> just, just a little bit of fear. Like. where they say fear is not a good thing. And then they talk about, well, when, when you see an alligator and it's coming at you, like... You should fear it a little bit. Did you know, and I saw this going way off topic. Like, it was like back in the 50s, they had some place that you had lunch with gators. And they showed the girls and they were at like a picnic, having a lunch with a bunch of gators around. Like, that didn't last very long. I'm yeah, sure, I can't I'm sure imagine. something bad happened. Yeah, I, I can't imagine the liability there. It's just, you had the woman looking down at the gators like, ah. So, anyways, that, that was a thing in our past. Right, so now, now we have a dark horse pick. Dark Wolf. Coach of the Year first? Oh, Coach of the Year. Fine. Okay. I'll go with that. I mean, I think Andy Reid, I keep wanting to Coach of the Year, so he's considered the greatest over Belichick. That's that's a little personal <laughs> vendetta with me. Um, it's not McCarthy. I don't. It's going to be, I don't know, Frank, Frank Wright. If, I'll go with Frank Wright. He's going to, Carolina might win that division and make the playoffs. And he's, I think Frank Wright's a good coach. I think when he left Philly, their offense fell apart. He got the, he made Carson Wentz an MVP candidate and then got hurt, thanks to my fantasy football team. And <laughs> he got hurt. It ended my season, basically. So I made the playoffs. But I didn't, Tom Brady sucked that year. Um, I'll have to go with Pete Carroll. Um, I think Seattle. Um, if, if you have to win the division to get coached here. You might win the division. I think, man. Probably San Fran, but... Oh, we forgot. Uh, so, you asked Pete Carroll's here? Yeah, I'll go with Pete, Pete Carroll. I, choose Sh- all. I don't know that. I don't know the every coach's name off the top of my Sh- head. Shanahan's right. a good good chance for that, too. 49ers, I go. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, no matter what they do, it's hard for him because someone like San Fran, when they're expected to win, they'd have to, like, go 16-1 and one to even go. And, by the way, the whole 20-0 and 0 take for Kansas City, stop it. Just, Just stop. Well, he also has a Jets like going 0 and 4 to start the season. I the whole 20 0. Like, they literally have no fan. defense Dude, with Jones out. I don't care. He's a Chiefs fan. He's just doing it because he's a Chiefs fan. I know, but. I, mean, I, I think their defense is going to put them in all sorts of trouble. Yeah, I do too. So we forgot, uh, before we do Dark Horse MVP, um, comeback player of the year. Comeback player. So someone who was bad or hurt last year. I'm going to start um, Deshaun Watson, if they're willing to give it to him. If the politics doesn't get in the way, because I think he's going to have a, a good year. He has a good offensive line. He has good running backs. His receivers are okay. So I think he's going to have a great year. And there's going to be some shootouts because I think Baltimore is going to score Pittsburgh. I don't know. Cincinnati. Like, I think there's going to be some shootouts there. I think he's going to play a lot better. I think he's going to become back player of the year if they're willing to give it to him. I, I, I'm going to go out on a limb, a little more risky one, say Odell. Back when he's playing... Playing with a quarterback, he's going to get a lot of big plays probably. I don't think they'll be consistently good. I don't think he's going to do like 100, 100 receives, but I think he'll get like every couple games that 60-yard touchdown type type yeah. play. And, and so and 
If he gets a thousand yards, I think that'll get it. I also the guy I want to get it. I don't think we'll get it because he was a rookie last year. Not Reese Hall. Yeah, Reese Lightning, baby. You can't come back if you've only had half the season. Well, hopefully he does. Yeah, and hopefully he's in discussion. Like, yeah, yeah we can't give it to him. That'd be fantastic. But like, yeah. That that would be fantastic. Oh, the, the other dark horse for that too, Michael Thomas down the seams. Yeah, that's he's been gone so long. I don't know if he's, he's healthy. Been years. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, that, that w- I mean, he, he comes back and gets a thousand yards and just give it to him. He, he's going to be there at number two because o- Olaf or Lav, the other guy, Gary Wilson's teammate in Ohio yeah, State, yeah. had a good year. Yeah. So man, they had some receiving. But the problem is Kamara does come back like week six because he bet he bet on games, which bet on games is worse than you know. I'm not going to get to the other stuff, but yeah. Too much more stuff. Yeah, you can do a lot of things. We're, <laughs> you can't bet. We got one podcast without going to that topic. Um, but yes. <laughs> yeah. So now, dark horse, dark horse MVP. So I'm gonna throw a crazy one out there, and this is more almost based on talent if he can stay healthy. Um, Pitts, the tight end in Atlanta. I think he's gonna get a lot of opportunities. He can be a dark horse offensive player of the year. He's not gonna be the MVP. Hey, you Dude, wanted a dark horse, so, so I tell me a guy someone that, no one's going to predict. I say someone no one's going to predict. How dare you say he, someone no one's going to predict? He has to have a chance. He does have a chance. No, so, someone like Sam Howell is a dark horse, even though he has no chance. <laughs> I'm not picking him. I don't knock my pick. I like uh, Boussard's pick of Derek Carr made a lot of sense, but I want to take that because that was, that was his. But that makes a lot of sense. I mean, if you want to pick, like, a, a quarterback, because they'll have to be quarterbacks, then, I mean, it's kind then of like Jimmy G. I think the dark horse is Tua. Which one? Because you know he he sees multiple people up there. Right, but he's... <laughs> he's, the, he's not even the same person. They don't see two of him. I'm just saying he's a dark horse because he has the receivers. Is it, like, him or the I am Batman him? That, that, is, that is the offense that can get... MVP type game. I still don't think they win division. I still think just win division. But I think Buffalo. Well, that that offense three. is is definitely. That's what I'm saying. And he's accurate, and the receivers are going to be open. So I think he's a dark horse MVP. I don't think he's going to stay healthy, but we'll see. Yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely possible. But. Oh, and Tyree Hill, shut up with the Aaron who number eight who. I know you're probably just joking, but Quinn know. Williams will stiff your arm your ass again. I don't That's who. Know what you're talking about. With the whole Giants thing, and Aaron said he doesn't know who I am. No, everyone. Like, bullshit, you know who I am. Tyreek said, who's number eight on the Jets? Oh, come on. So that's what Tyreek said. I think he's mean. I think he's poking fun at it. Cause he's, he's got it because 12. if you don't, if you play football, you have no idea Aaron Rodgers. Right, like but I think problem. he's doing, like, the, the chase that said Patrick who. Yeah. So, Tyreek Hill, you got stiffed on my like Quinn Williams at the five-yard line last year. Like, he said, boom. Like, and then you got hurt. And then you said, oh, I'm hurt because of it. Like, you can't, you can't make fun of that team that beat you once and should have beat you twice. And he's one I know those players, you know at some point he's just going to hit that cliff. He's going to hit that cliff. And, uh, by the way, he did not do very good against Sauce. He didn't. Now, but they're going to say it's because it was. They did have a third string in the game throwing to him. So. Right, but that third string had time the second time. Yeah. It's not like, I mean, the second game was like, what, 10-3? <laughs> yeah, I mean, don't get wrong. Our corners are legit. And now our whole secondary is legit. Right, and DJ Reed's one of the most underrated players yeah. in the league. Um, but don't get it wrong, Tyree Kill is, is a monster. No, he is a monster. But I'm just saying, like, you can't run your mouth like that no. against a team that stiffed on your. I hope everyone runs their mouth because now you have the Giants saying they can't wait to play us. You have Denver, which is also became an important game. Like, hey. you can't you can't have Alabama Mac out there saying talking shit about Chandler from the Raiders. <laughs> By the way, how come you fan? How come you retired? Uh, not top ten plays when that shit happened, huh? <laughs> he did a butt fumble for like a year. Matt Jones gets intercepted on a pass back, whatever it was. <laughs> the worst play. That was almost as bad. Or that that was the worst play of last year, followed secondly by that <laughs> Ezekiel Elliott. Look, it wasn't him hiking the ball. That wouldn't have been the worst play, right? Yeah. That was a terrible play, but if Zeke's not the one hiking the ball. Yeah. You know, okay. Well, that's what made it to terrible play. He's hiking the ball. Like, oh! And the guy's just like, dude, I got free. I'm knocking you over. He's like, please don't. But dude, as soon as that ball's gone, I can't hit the center right away. As soon as the ball's gone, you're fucked. Yeah, he was fucked. <laughs> so the, those are our predictions. Uh, we actually came right on time. So, yeah, we're uh, off topic a couple times, but that's okay. Hey, but that's who we are. Like, if we're not off topic, people aren't appreciating us. Well, people aren't appreciating us anyway. Hey, we got like 
No views. We have to die first, and then people will go back. Oh my god, latest podcast. Too bad. Too bad. The aliens came and took them when they took Aaron Rodgers. So where are they taking us? That matters. Does it? <laughs> yes. Yes. It does. <laughs> it's off planet Earth. Can I just bring people and dogs with me? Like if aliens came by and said, "Hey, Tim, <laughs> we'll do this. We'll open up the bright light and we'll, we'll do this question." Uh, All right. So see you guys soon. <laughs> see you next week tomorrow.